Okay, so picking up where we left off uh, with this kind of empty model that we've just imported as an OBJ from Rhino into Unity, and we're going to pick up with textures. Um, and there are, of course, a number of textures you can get um, in Unity um, from the Asset Store for free or textures you can get from elsewhere. Um, these are just from a public directory that I had on file, so there are um, what's important to understand in Unity is that uh, Unity represents height in textures by normal maps. Um, and this is different from, uh, for example, V-Ray, which relies mostly on bump maps, or Maxwell, which uses more like displacement maps in addition to bump maps. Um, normal maps um, represent texture in three dimensions, whereas um, Bump maps uh, basically only give you the height, only give you one dimension. So normal maps are, when it's an option, certainly preferable to bump maps. Um, and we're certainly going to want to use those in Unity as opposed to bump maps. Um, Unity does have a feature where if you import um, a bump map, it will automatically try to convert it to a normal map. But it doesn't really work that well. Um, and I recommend that you try to find um, materials that have corresponding normal maps that are accurate and, and work well. Um, and if that's proving difficult, you might want to look up a program like Crazy Bump or uh, NVIDIA also has a competitor that um, will basically help you generate a normal map based on an existing image um, like these, these ones here. So in addition to to these two materials um, consisting of displacement map and, um, or sorry, diffuse map and normal map, and here diffuse map and normal map. Um, for the glass material, I've made a, basically a four pixel, um, two blue pixel and two white pixel um, PNG, which will then tile over each sheet of glass and um, the white will be shown as uh, transparent. So it's a it's kind of a clever way of um, of achieving the semi transparency that you need to show a sheet of glass. Additionally, you can modify this to uh, sort of simulate the effect of fritted glass or or something like that. Um, and then um, I also have a metal lattice uh, diffuse and a bump map. Um, in this bump map, I'll be basically converting to a, a normal map um, in Unity, but it's, it's fine because the um, that texture is not super important. Um, and I've just uh, taken these images and pasted them, just dropped them directly into the assets materials directory. Um, and so now when I open Unity, it's going to search for these materials um, and automatically add them in here. Uh, so referencing them from the physical directory into the Unity workspace. You might notice that now it's created these, um, in the directory, these meta files, which, um, again, don't let that throw you off. These are just kind of uh, roadmaps for how these um, material or how these textures are going to form materials and, and where they belong in the directory. Um, if you delete them, they're just going to come back. Um, so just kind of get used to them for now. Um, and they're not visible in, in this view. So what I have here in this materials folder that I've created are not materials actually, but textures. Um, and in order to use these textures in the uh, Unity document, they need to be assigned to materials. Um, so if I just right click here in this in the empty space and go to create material um, I'm just going to do this uh, four times for the four materials that I know that I'm going to need in the scene um, and I can just call them concrete um, lattice Using and finally, papers. 
Okay, so if I click on concrete, it'll bring up the concrete material. Um, and I want to set this to a bumped diffuse material. And so then it will expect um, two different textures, so the base and the normal map. Um, so then I just need to drag these into the corresponding windows. Um, now, see here is bringing up a dialog that says this texture is not marked as a normal map. Fix now. Uh, be careful of this. I would recommend instead just clicking on this normal map and um, specifying the type as a normal map. So this is the import settings. And now it's going to say, by default, create from grayscale. We don't want to do that because that's that's the option that it would check um, if it was converting a bump map in, into a normal map. Here we actually have a really good normal map already, so um, we're just we're going to uncheck that create from grayscale um, option there. Um, right, and then we click apply. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the pavers um, normal map because we would have that same issue anyway. So that's a normal map, um, and again, not creating it from grayscale. Let's go ahead and apply that. So if we go back to our concrete texture, we see now the normal map and uh, base map are lining up quite well. We get a very rich and detailed texture. Um, and let's do the same thing for the pavers and set this to bump diffuse and drag in texture and normal map. Um, okay, so now let's let's go ahead before we specify the other materials um, and um, apply the concrete and the pavers material. So the pavers material is only going to go to um, this one surface here, the kind of ground plane. Um, if we click on the model once, we get the entire mesh. If we click on it again, if we double click, we can get a specific element. In this case, um, what's referred to as the object uh, called zero, which is our ground plane. We can just drag and drop the pavers um, material onto that. So it's obviously too big um, and we can um, change the tiling and in X and Y and um, that will will also need to change the normal map. Um, I think this should be automatic but unfortunately it's not. So if we just try by doing uh, still too large. Um, let's try 50. And that seems pretty close. Um, still maybe a bit too large, but um, let's just do 70. And then that will copy that. Um, sure, that's fine. Um, and then now let's try to apply all of our concrete materials. Um, we know we have a, a bunch of different layers that are all going to be um, concrete. I'm just going to go through and click on each one, holding control to the ramp, columns, walls, not glazing or mullions, columns, slab. Uh, these are all going to be concrete. Columns. Slab walls, columns, slab walls, columns, slab walls, columns. Okay, so I can just, uh, I've now selected all of these, and in the inspector here, I can just drag and drop uh, the concrete as a component onto all of these. So that just threw. Um, through concrete onto um, all these materials. Again, um, the 
texture is much too large, so I'm going to need to scale it down. But um, you can see that at least between um, between these parts that were um, discontinuous before, the texture is now seamless, and that's what we uh, were able to accomplish using the texture mapping functionality in Rhino. So if we just click on the concrete material, uh, we can change this to something like 50 by 50 as well. Um, that's a little bit better. We um, can probably make some improvements on that as well. Maybe a bit too much. Um, and it's also not a guarantee that X and Y need to be the same dimension. Um, it seems actually maybe we've got that reversed. Um, it just requires a bit of trial and error. Yeah, that looks a bit more squarish. Um, these uh, repetitions are really obvious in the patterning here, but once we add in light mapping and um, other materials, that will become less obvious. Okay, so we just say that's good enough for now with the concrete. Um, and um, we can take a look at the glass material. Um, so for our glass texture, um, we want to select this PNG. Um, that's importing as just a texture, and we don't need to worry about alpha um, at all. And then if we go to glazing, that's the material. Um, and if we need to assign it with a texture, the type of material should be transparent, diffuse. And if we just drag and drop glass into there, um, it's read the white bits as transparent, so we can see through it in parts. Um, of course, we're going to want to change the density, um, as now it's, it's quite too large. Um, and we can do that here. So initially it was one by one, um, and instead we're you know, maybe going to want something more like 100 or even 300 by 300. Um, so let's go ahead and select all of our uh, glazing layers. So glazing, 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 glazing. And drag and drop this material onto all of them. So now we have a glass material for all of our glass in the scene. Okay, next I need to create a lattice material that will apply to this uh, this kind of mesh that um, goes along the outside of these handrails. So that's going to be a transparent bumped diffuse map. And that will allow me to put in both a base texture and a normal map. Um, which we'll both use to um, create opacity. Let's just drag and drop both of those in there. Um, so you can see how this is creating a, a semi-transparent texture. Um, we can work on the details of that later, but that's uh, it's good enough for now. Uh, we see here that the texture is not marked as a normal map. Um, that's fine, we don't want it to be. Um, if we go to the inspector, um, we can mark it as a normal map um, and tell it to create from grayscale. Um, but that's also not strictly necessary. Um, and then finally, one material that we forgot so far um, is the kind of black trim that will be the handrails and also the mullions. Um, so let's go ahead and make a one last material 
which we can call um, mullions. And I'm just going to make that a flat color, kind of grayish. And we will apply that to everything that's called mullions or railings. Uh, railings. So there we go. So starting to get slightly better. Um, we can go ahead and change a few things like um, you know, the color of this glass if it's too blue. Um, and then you know other material properties we probably can't tell too much until we have a better lighting source. So uh, this looks like a good place to end the second part of this tutorial series and we'll pick up later with um, <clears throat> with lighting and environment.